Good evening everyone, welcome to an old Cyclone Chasers public cyclone update today, the 18th of December 2015. My name's Chris Nitzo, this update's sponsored by a major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, the only scientific team we trust in a cyclone when measurements matter. Just a quick reminder for those that are watching this tonight, what I'm about to tell you, I've already told two subscribers probably about 24 hours ago. So to always get the latest updated information from Oz Cyclone Chasers and also support us in our documentary efforts for tropical cyclones, please head to our website ozcyclonechasers.com.au and click on the subscribe link and become an OCC subscriber. You get access to a lot of in-depth video updates as well as access to our live streams and our live streaming data when we're in a cyclone. Some very low pressures here at 4pm this afternoon, Queensland time, we can see of these heat lows and, and heat troughs here through WA extending into Northern Territory, central pressures, or not central pressures, but minimum pressures down to around about 999 hectopascals, very, very low pressures, no strong ridging. The only ridging in place at the moment is over the top of Queensland, uh, keeping the coast of Queensland reasonably fine. Nationwide radar imagery, ignore all this stuff in the Kim, in the Pilbara, there's nothing going on there, so don't, don't worry about that stuff uh, that looks like rain. But up here, this stuff is real, and we've got a convergence zone along the uh, Gulf, or around the Gulf of Carpentaria, creating a lot of rainfall across the Western Peninsula, Gulf Coast, and the eastern half of the Northern Territory. That's in anticipation and preparation for the monsoon trough, which should be coming down around about Sunday or Monday. Alrighty, if we take a, a really brief look here at the latest in the computer model imagery, this is from the GFS forecast model. You can start to see the low developing here around about 4 a.m. on Monday and moving in a southerly direction to be hitting the coast as a Category 1 or 2 tropical cyclone here uh, around about uh, Thursday, which is Christmas Eve, around about Thursday night. And then it sort of sits there right near the uh, southeastern gulf for an extended period of time. If it does that, we're going to see very heavy rainfall on that northeast coast of Queensland. Anywhere from Cairns south to Mackay would be bearing the brunt of that sort of activity. Uh, we're pr probably looking at uh, in excess of a couple of hundred millimetres for much of that coastline. So uh, definitely a positive scenario. Unfortunately, the GFS does stop short of taking it inland too far. So it sort of just keeps it here in the gulf and then pushes it back to the west. A uh, less accurate computer model here from the CMC, we can see that the low pressure system develops in the southwest Gulf of Carpentaria, a little bit different here to the GFS, and develops around about Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening, and uh, it sort of just sits there and doesn't do too much until late on Monday or Tuesday where it starts to develop and uh, intensify, making landfall here on the western peninsula and then extending in through inland northern Queensland. Once again, remembering, of course, that it, a system that's here is just going to create monumental rainfall for central and northern Queensland uh, that that is anywhere, any place lying on that southern edge. And the reason being, being there is uh, we're going to see these northerly, northeasterly and southeasterly winds converging on this zone to the south of the low. So... With that convergence zone, we could see rainfalls of up to maybe even more than 100 millimetres over six hours. So it becomes a real issue, particularly because that's around about the time of some fairly high tides uh, in December 24, 25, 26 across Queensland. Not only that, of course, it's Christmas as well. So there's a lot of people hoping for an outdoors Christmas party. It's not going to happen if you live in North Queensland, I'm afraid, unless you've got a pool party happening. The European model has also been a little bit all over the shop, and this is normally our go-to model, so it's been chopping and changing with different scenarios here. So we see the low developing here Monday morning around about the central Gulf of Carpentaria. You can see it moves erratically a little bit to the west here by Tuesday morning. As we go to Wednesday morning, it starts drifting back to the east and starts intensifying. That's the key here. It does start intensifying by Wednesday morning. Uh, but it does move fairly quickly from Wednesday, and if we go to Thursday, we can see that the uh, that the tropical cyclone or low is quite a lopsided system, and you can see here we've got a lot of fetch from its north and a very strong convergence to its east, but not too much to its west. And so we've got uh, probably an indication there that you're probably looking at a low as opposed to a cyclone on the European. But there's a lot of time between now and then, a lot of time for things to change. All right, we can see here as we go into December 25th, Christmas Day, the system has made landfall over the southeast gulf. Look at this convergence here to the east, right along the coastline here between Cairns and Townsville, possibly even as far south as the Whitsundays, looking at some very heavy rainfall, not to mention, of course, the extreme rainfall that would be happening 
to its immediate east and also to its north in that monsoonal fetch. You can see then that the European is not very keen to clear that system out. It just sort of sits here over northern Queensland and just dumps copious amounts of rainfall, uh, particularly to its south. You can see the monsoon continues to rage on into the Coral Sea, so no sign of it weakening as it heads out into the Coral Sea. Uh, but the low pressure centre remains back in place here, so we're talking about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millimetres. I don't even want to speculate as to how much rain could fall in this sort of scenario. We take a look at the European, uh, sorry, the GFS ensemble. That's 20 different GFS model members, and what we can see here is a fairly decent, uh, fairly decent agreement out until Wednesday night that the system will track in this southerly direction towards the south or southeastern Gulf of Carpentaria. Very similar to the European, so up until that, we're very similar. It's when, it's what happens once the system hits here, the southeast Gulf, that things change and we go, we go all sorts of crazy. Uh, so we have the low. Possibly still remaining in here, but uh, also we have a lot of outliers bringing the low across the north tropical coast here and out towards the Coral Sea. And that's exactly what we see by uh, the 27th of December, where the low could be in the Gulf moving back to the west, or it could be in the Coral Sea moving away to the southeast. So we've got a big range of scenarios there out to about day eight and nine, which is to be expected, of course, because we have a monsoon, we have a low that hasn't formed yet, and we've got a very complex and very weak steering pattern at the moment, but that may change by next weekend. Alrighty, so if we take a look now at the finally at the Euro Ensemble, Tuesday morning the Euro Ensemble has the low developing in the southwest gulf. It sort of just sits there for Wednesday. Then Thursday it starts to move in this southeasterly direction, but very, very slowly, and sort of just sits somewhere between the border of NT and Queensland uh, there through Thursday, Friday. Uh, and then just sort of sits there again on Saturday. Obviously, in this scenario, the major part of that rainfall is going to be in this northwest part of Queensland and the uh, north, uh, and the eastern half of the Northern Territory, but particularly so uh, on that Gulf Coast, which is just to the east of where that low is. And the reason that most of the really heavy stuff is going to be just to the east, it's where we get that moist convergent zone between the northerlies, the northeasterlies, and the east northeasterlies all coming in here and all getting smashed up together and creating a hell of a lot of rain for the, for, for the areas just to the east of the low. And of course, if it does move over the Cape, the uh, the focus of activity will become just to the east of it, but also the northeast coast of Queensland, which could be in for an absolute shellacking if this system does make it over the Cape. It is still a big if, and that is why I don't want to speculate on rainfall totals. But I can tell you now, if it makes it over the Cape, in the type of in the type of synoptic situation we have at the surface, we would be looking at at least two to three hundred millimeters on large parts of the northeast tropical coast, should the system make it onto the southern peninsula. Alrighty, so looking at what we can expect tomorrow, we can see a lot of rainfall here in the Gulf of Carpentaria. Well, that's obvious. Uh, from the north, though, we're going to get this northwesterly flow, which is going to also scrape uh, the edge here of the northeast Arnhem district. So we could be seeing places like Gove, Nullanboy, uh, those, those sort of areas also receiving some pretty sizable totals if they're lucky enough to get some of those monsoonal showers on the way through. Um, also, the most of the Northern Territory is going to cop showers and storms. However, they'll be a little bit more isolated to the western half uh, compared to the eastern half. So the eastern half is going to have a lot more scattered activity. Uh, the North Kimberley too, we're going to see some showers and storms in the far North Kimberley as well, uh, more isolated as we head further south through the interior of WA, obviously because there's a lot less moisture there. Over Queensland, we're going to see some showers on the coast here around the Makaida with Sundays region. Also, some probably some more scattered type activity from around about uh, just north of Townsville through to around about Cooktown. And also in the North Peninsula, we'll see a little bit of activity, but that's all pre-monsoonal. The monsoon hasn't hit yet. Now, Sunday. Sunday, the monsoon starts. The monsoon starts up here in the far northwestern peninsula. Uh, we see the first signs of a bit of a northwesterly pulse or surge, if you will, and we see an increase in rainfall across the Gulf 
of Carpentaria, and that's all in association with the beginning of the development of that low. Uh, we've got scattered showers and thunderstorms now extending a little bit further to the west in the Northern Territory. Also, a slight increase in shower and storm activity over the Kimberley region, but only in the eastern Kimberley. Very isolated activity anywhere else in WA. Isolated showers tending more scattered north of around about Ingham or Cardwell and becoming quite scattered up around Cooktown there on Sunday. On Monday, we definitely see the start of the monsoon here across northern parts of, or the far northern parts of the peninsula. And we also see a corresponding increase here again in the northeast Arnhem district as we see that monsoonal surge push through. Uh, north Queensland will continue to see some shower activity. However, all the bulk of that shower activity will be north of around about uh, Port Douglas to Cooktown area. Got a fairly strong inland trough as well through central parts of Australia, extending west into WA, so we could see some isolated showers in the inland parts, far eastern parts of the Gascoyne, possibly the far eastern parts of the Pilbara, and once again the eastern half of the Kimberley is the go-to place for storms in the west. As we go to Tuesday, we can see the monsoon starting to become much more evident over Queensland. Anywhere north of Cairns now is starting to see an increase in rainfall and quite general and widespread activity at 50 to 100 mils for the day. Uh, obviously, the Gulf of Carpentaria is still the area to watch because look at uh, this convergence zone developing here on the eastern side of that tropical low. Also, the northwest parts of the Territory are starting to see an increase in rainfall as well here on Tuesday as that monsoonal surge pushes towards them. Same thing, same goes for the eastern half of the Kimberley. But unfortunately, uh, for most of the population out here in the west, it looks fairly dry, even as far north as Broome. Might be some isolated showers and storms on Tuesday too across the southern border areas of Queensland and into southeast and, and into the southeast coast. Also the possibility of some very isolated showers here on the central coast region. It's what happens after Tuesday, folks, that could be an absolute godsend for some people of the north of Queensland and possibly even the northeastern parts of the Northern Territory. But we're not going there in this update. You'll have to catch us again on Monday if you want to know past the 22nd. Alternatively, become a subscriber. We'll have another update for you for subscribers in the morning and we'll have another update for you guys in the public on Monday. So we'll make them every three days now as we anticipate the beginning of the monsoon. Enjoy your weekend and I'll talk to you on Monday.